Good evening, I'm Pastor Adrian Kramer of St John's Lutheran Church in Ballarat, Victoria and welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. During our worship there will be an imposition of ashes. I will apply the ashes to my own forehead in the mark of the cross and you are welcome to do the same. You probably don't have ashes so I invite you to go and get some water during a hymn and apply that to your head in the mark of the Holy Cross to remind you of your baptism and that there you were drowned and your sins were put to death and you were given new life in Christ. And so every day is a life of repentance. We sing our first hymn. Yet even now, says the Lord, return Return to me with with all all your heart, heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and and relents from punishing. Our gracious God is among us, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash Wash me me thoroughly from from my sin, and and cleanse me from from my sin. sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and and also also with you. you. Let us pray. Together. Lord Lord God, God, Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, you desire to be merciful and are always more willing to pardon than condemn. condemn. Listen to the prayers of your penitent people and in your goodness set free all who are trapped in sin. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is written in Joel chapter 2, reading verses 1 and 2, and then from verse 12. Blow a trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness there is spread upon the mountains a great and powerful people. Their like has never been seen before, nor will be again after them through the years of all generations." Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering, For the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord. And make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The second reading is written in 2 Corinthians, reading from chapter 5, verse 20, through to chapter 6, verse 10. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In a favourable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favourable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation." We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honour and dishonour, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. For our sake God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so so that that in him we might might become the righteousness righteousness of God. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 6, reading verses 1 to 6, and then from verse 16. Our Lord says, Beware of practising your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, 
when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This But the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Grace, peace and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our sermon today is Joel for chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 6. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for granting everything needed for this body and life. Send to us now your Holy Spirit that we would hear your words, believe them and live. Amen. Why ashes on Ash Wednesday? Ashes are the result of death and destruction caused by fire. Perhaps that's why they were an Old Testament sign of mourning. 
along with pouring ashes on one's head, a scratchy hessian robe was worn. You dressed yourself like this to show everyone around you that grief had robbed joy from your life and that you are laid low in the dust. Sackcloth and ashes were also the dress of the repentant sinner. You put ashes on yourself as a sign of grief over your sins and a reminder that death is the penalty for sin. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return, our Lord said to Adam and Eve when they sinned. This was God's judgment upon them and his judgment upon us all. Adam was the man of dust, formed from dust by the hand of God and headed back to dust by his own doing. Sin is a dirty business. It's not just a skin deep. It goes to the core of our soul. It's inherited from Adam and it's an all-consuming disease. Rubbing ashes on your skin won't cure it any more than a dab of ointment and a band-aid band can cure cancer. An ashen cross on one's forehead is a symbol of what we deserve for our sins and where we are headed because of them. But it, but it also proclaims the means by which God has saved us, the cross of Christ. But ashes and the symbol of a cross cannot change our heart or save us. God has not given them to us as the means of receiving his grace. Ashes are not a sacrament. To the sinner, God says, rend your hearts and not your garments. Symbolic gestures just won't cut it when it comes to repentance. Symbols are helpful reminders pointing us to the goodness of God and to the reality of things that happen, but there is no power of God in them. On the other hand, the sacraments given to us by the Lord himself carry the power of God to save. They contain God's command and his promises. They are what he says they are. They do what he says they do, even if it doesn't look like it, and to us it doesn't feel like it. Baptism is not a symbol of rebirth. It actually is your rebirth from above. The Lord's Supper is not a symbol of Christ's body and blood. It actually is Christ himself. Holy absolution is not a symbolic gesture of forgiveness. It actually is God's forgiveness spoken to you. As the words of the absolution into your ears, you are truly forgiven your sins. God's word, that two-edged sword of law and gospel, cut to our hearts, accusing and forgiving, afflicting and comforting, killing and making alive. Symbols might help us get to the right place in our thinking, but the word of God delivers the power of God for our salvation. So the church deals in what is real. You have a real death. You are dust, and you are going to dust, and there's nothing that you or I can do about it. Medicine can't change it. Good works can't save us. You can't save you. Dust you are, and to dust you shall return. The ashes remind us of that. But so does our everyday life. Just take a look in your bathroom mirror. See the creases, the lines the grey hair. The signs of death are at work in you and me. Look in the mirror of the law. See the idolatry, rebellion, murder, immorality, the pride, greed, lies, hatred, slander, all reflected back at us. And so the Lord says, rend your hearts and not your garments. But the church is not here to rub your sin in your face. It does not exist to place a symbol of mourning and death on you and watch you squirm. 
The church is the beacon of the gospel. A place where sinners can die a blessed death and live forever. A refuge for the weary who are beaten down by the law. A place where the soot of Adam's sin and our own is washed away. A place where we can live our lives by faith in the Son of God, who loved us and gave himself up for us. All the doing of salvation is done. What's left is for us to receive more of God's grace and to live out our faith as his people in this broken world. But that's not easy. It's a battle. And that's part of the reason we have Ash Wednesday and Lent. They are something of a religious boot camp, a time of focused discipline, of unlearning bad habits and replacing them with good ones, like the disciplines Jesus mentioned in our Gospel reading. Prayer, giving money to the poor, fasting. These are not symbols of our salvation. They give witness to salvation living in us. When you pray, Jesus said, Don't babble like pagans or parade your faith like those who like their religion to be seen. Instead, go to your room and pray to your Father in heaven. And when you give money to the poor, don't make a big show of it. Don't trumpet your generosity around. Don't even let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And when you fast, Jesus says, wash your face, comb your hair, and don't let anyone know what you're doing. This is between you and your Father in heaven. These are supposed to be things done in freedom, done in response to God's grace. You are children of God who play at the feet of your Father. If you want to show something of substance to others, let them see your good works. Let them see your faithfulness in your vocations. Let them see how you deal with guilt and shame of your sin by being forgiven. Let them see that you respond to sins against you by forgiving and seeking, recon seeking reconciliation. Don't show them symbolic gestures. Show them the real thing. Show them the goodness of our gracious God. For you have been rescued from the dust of death by your Lord Jesus. He was without sin, yet took on your sin, going down to the dust of your death to pull you up from the ashes. Dust you are, and to dust you will return. But there is a far greater truth. From the dust you shall rise to eternal life with Christ Jesus, who, though sinless, became your sin. In him you have become the righteousness of God. He washed away the dirt of your death in your baptism. He cleanses your lips and life with his own holy body and precious blood. He forgives all your sins. He has given you a new heart that beats to the rhythm of his own. He has given you a life with God that overflows with his undeserved grace and mercy. He's taken away those rough garments, the sackcloth of sin, and swapped them for his own spotless white robe of righteousness. That's what Ash Wednesday is about. And that's what Lent is about. Jesus going to die your death on the cross. And in exchange, you get to live his life now. And not even death can rob you of that. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty Father, bring us to sorrow and contrition for our sins and lead us to the means of grace. For by them you grant us the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Lead us to live righteous lives, trusting in you and serving our neighbour in love. Amen. We confess our Christian faith. I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are all born weak and helpless. All lead the same short troubled life. We grow and wither as quickly as flowers. We disappear like shadows. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we go for help but to you, Lord God, though you are rightly displeased because of our sins? And yet, Lord God Almighty, most holy and most merciful Saviour, deliver us from the bitterness of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. Mercifully hear us, most worthy Judge Eternal. Keep us at our last hour in the consolation of your love. Amen. Dust we are, and to dust we shall return, ashes, ashes to ashes, ashes dust, dust to dust. dust. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence, and the mark of the Holy Cross be a reminder that we receive eternal life by God's gift alone, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Amen. As you make the mark of the Holy Cross upon your forehead, and as I do so with these ashes, I invite you to say these words along with me. Dust I am, and to dust I shall return. To Christ I belong, and to Christ I shall return. These ashes represent our innumerable sins, yet the immeasurable love of Jesus covers them all. This is a true and trustworthy saying. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I announce to you the grace of God. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy on me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. Turn to us again, O Lord. Have pity on your servants. Let your goodness and love be with us as we put our hope in you. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. And, and let, let your, your saints, saints shout, shout for joy. joy. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be, Be their shepherd, shepherd and, and carry them, them forever. forever. Remember your church, which, which you redeemed long ago. Peace be within its walls and, and security within its towers. Let us pray for our absent brothers and sisters. O, o Lord our God, God save your, your servants who trust in you. you. Let us pray for God's people who are broken hearted and oppressed. Redeem Israel, O God, from all their troubles. Send us help from your holy place and give us support from Zion. Restore us, O God Almighty. Let your faith shine upon us that we may be saved. Rise up, O Christ, come to our help. Deliver us for the sake of your love. Give peace in our time, O Lord. There is no one who fights for us except you, O God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all right works come from you. Give your servants that peace which the world cannot give. Defend us from the fear of our enemies, and set our hearts to obey your commandments so that we may live on earth in rest and quietness. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Saviour, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. We pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. We sing our final hymn. May Christ, our crucified Saviour, draw you to himself, so that you may find in him the assurance of sins forgiven and the gift of eternal life. Go in peace. God bless. <laughs>